Tonight, we're getting into a heavier topic that many of us have probably spent countless hours exploring multiple rabbit holes. Before we go into this discussion, however, I want to offer a word of caution. You can take this as a lesson of despair or an opportunity of hope. The difference may be simply a matter of perspective. I'm joined with my good friend, Courtney Wheaton. We're going to talk tonight about a tarot reading she did, exploring the possibility of are we living on the prison planet? Are our souls all trapped here and being recycled? We're going to dive into that and explore both perspectives and possibly more as we get into this. Courtney, how are you, my friend? I'm well. How are you today, Dennis? I'm doing quite well. Also, just a little bit tired. And as I'm speaking, a moth is flying around my face. I'm not sure if that's a sign for something. I don't know. But transformation <laughs> is eminent. There you go. Yeah, that's it. All right. I'll take that. That I'll take that as a positive. But it's transformations are so difficult and challenging. Yeah, they kind of <laughs> suck when you're actually going through them. They they kind of blow. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I, I saw a comment on uh, on my recent podcast that just got posted with Sean and I mean, I just joked. I was like, all right, enough life lessons. I'm done learning the lessons because they're so hard. Somebody was laughing at that one. So speaking of which real quick, just a, just a sidebar to everybody that, that follows the podcast. Thank you for your overwhelming support. It's uh, it's been really great to see that, that discussion uh, that you're all having out there. And uh, I am working on lining up some other guests. I know there was some suggestions like, Hey, we see crypto faces all the time. Uh, I am bringing in some external guests as well. It just takes a while as we're getting things up and running. Um, but please keep the suggestions coming in. We are exploring them and, and uh, trying to get some people lined up. But in the meantime, Courtney's got some great things to offer. Uh, and I, I really think it'll be a fun conversation about this tarot session that you did, Courtney. So um, it, it started out, I guess, with a question. Where where did this come from where you, where you uh, did this session? I, th I think a lot of it stems from um, this subject just being in the ether a lot. Yeah, um, a few mm -hmm. months ago this summer, I actually went to um, there was a, a Gnostic conference over in Wheaton, Illinois, at the Theosophical. I remember State, that. Yeah, which was really interesting. Mm -hmm. um, I went to watch. Uh, there's a sort of an American philosopher named James True that's on YouTube, and I, I liked a lot of his work, and I just kind of wanted to go and check it out. And it was my first real exploration of dealing with um, sort of the old school, modern take on on Gnosticism. Mm -hmm. And you get that um, that archonic soul trap idea that comes through in a yeah. lot of the Gnostic writings. Mm -hmm. and, it's, and then you start to see that theme in whether it's pop culture in like, say, the Matrix movies yeah. Or um, in this particular instance, you know, David Ike popped back up in my YouTube. Right. <laughs> the algorithm gave me a little Ike and yeah. I haven't watched him in a long time. And I was like, well, we'll see what Dave's got to say, you know, about any of that. Mm -hmm. um, but there's so many avenues where that flavor comes through, whether it's, you know, if you're watching yeah. Alex Jones and the concept of a prison planet, mm -hmm. um, that idea is just sort of with us quite a bit in different flavors and it comes back yeah. up throughout different parts in history and so to me mm -hmm. it was it was a really interesting thing because it's like i've gone through periods of my life where i did think oh my god we're stuck here mm -hmm. we're trapped and then i've i've sort of pushed past that through the other side of that right uh, i wanted to kind of see you know what do the cards have to say about this as a as a theme as a struggle are we are we really stuck here or not you know, and that's a, I think that's a question a lot of us ponder as we get deep and dark enough. Cause if you're on this journey long enough, you start exploring that dark side. Um, you know, for me, I mean, obviously I, I wrote, you know, my book about, about this because I had gone through the death of my father and I had all this psychic stuff happening. I was like, oh my gosh, we, we are trapped. We are, you know, it, it is as David Icke says. And um, that was a really dark time for me, a, a sense of despair. But as I was writing the book, and doing more because it was a research-based book and experiential. But as I'm writing this, I'm doing more and more research. And I'm going, okay, this is possible. This stuff, some of this stuff might be happening, but there's also all this awesome stuff that we have going on that we're just not tapping into right now that could really, it changes the paradigm, changes the perspective here. So it started out as like this book of despair and it ends up being like, oh no, it's hopeful. There's so many things that we can do here. Yeah, and that to me is the most is the beautiful aspect of this experience here because mm -hmm. I think if you don't have that dark night of the soul type yeah. journey, and and some people, um, 
you know, you get, it's really easy to get stuck on repeat with that and mm-hmm. to, to fall into victimhood consciousness and to. It's addicting. I it mean, it's really a, it's is. As scary as it is, it's it's that they say like that fear porn, you're just sucked into it. It, it yeah. really does. And even in, you know, I'd done some past life regression hypnotherapy work where I got a mm-hmm. lot of answers on sort of like my trauma and yeah. at least relating it to, um, events in in this life that sort of set up the same situation or emotional uh, parameters where I Mm -hmm. I get to kind of explore this, this idea again, and can you do it differently? And, um, but even then you start thinking, oh, well, you know, I'm, I'm stuck. I'm just recycling. I keep getting the same experiences. And it's like, it just reminds me, I don't know if you encounter this, um, it's kind of a, a a meme in the military, you know, that the, the beatings will continue until morale improves. Mm-hmm. Um, that idea, I think, just really started to resonate more and more with me. It's like the more you're miserable about this, the more misery you're going to get. And right. until you shift your perspective. You're not really going to get anything different. And so in that regard, it does feel like yeah. you're stuck. And then just to speak on that meme you're talking about the military, you know, that's a that's a true thing because that you do reach a point as a unit when you're starting to bond, you start to relish those beatings because you realize, oh, I can do this as you're getting stronger and everybody starts. And then that that frustration turns into motivation and you're like and everybody starts cheering it on like, yeah, bring it on. We got this. And it flips, well, you it embrace, flips the it's script the, on. It's the embrace the suck. Yeah. You know, it's that concept where, OK, mm-hmm. and you are bond. You were I mean. If nothing else, the military is an, an intense trauma bonding situation. Yeah. When you yeah. go through that experience as a group together, even if you have nothing else in common, you have that shared experience and right. you always have that connection, you know, with any yeah. branch of the service, you know, it's like, right. I was in the air force. I don't really, my experience was, was nothing like, you know, a person who was maybe a Marine, but we yeah. have. There's that common bond. We'll we'll harass each other. We will harass each other based on whatever branch you were in. Right. Uh, But at the end of the day, we we have that common bond through our service because it's that shared experience. Right. And it's a shared suck, you know? Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. That that people that haven't gone through it don't don't understand, which I which I think is similar to what we're talking about tonight, because this is a topic that not everybody explores and then not everybody within our community even explores it you know so it's it's kind of niche where but there's that common bond of people who have have done that work who've gone through that that darkness and and, you know been scared and terrified and and given up hope to then come through the other side or if you're not through the other side yet i'd say keep listening because there is another side as you keep going through this there and that i think is the the biggest takeaway for this Mm -hmm. that there is actually another side um it's it's hard when so I think especially when someone just starts kind of looking at mm-hmm. some of this stuff and their their eyes get opened to so many different areas of, of mm-hmm. interest or so many it's it's like whack-a-mole with the rabbit holes, you know. There's so right. many options for people to kind of dip a toe into what do you mean? There's this whole other aspect of, of inquiry that that people could right. get interested in. And um it can be overwhelming and enlightening. But traumatic. Yes. You know, it's Very it's much. it's you go into these depressions and, and, and it's it's just such a challenging experience going through that because the whole world drops out from under you and you and you have nothing, no more foundation. Like I, right. I've been through several of these, and I remember like my first one, I dropped off of religion, and it's like, okay, now what do I grab onto? So you're going to the right. bookstore and you're looking for every spiritual path you can get on because I, like, I need a religion. Yeah. I need a spiritual I have to have you, something to cling to. I gotta have yeah. something, you know. So and, and that those moments they're they're desperate and they're scary because you feel alone. Um, but that's I think what it takes, which I think is the greatest thing here is you know, if you don't have that question, if you don't explore those scary things, you're not gonna grow. Uh, no, and know. it for some people, I think that it, that might not be something that they're experiencing. Like, you know, I'm I am a big proponent mm-hmm. and believer in reincarnation. Um, mm-hmm. I do think we, in in a certain way, get recycled. Um, right. Until you reach a point of, I think we experience reincarnation until we're strong enough to experience resurrection, and I think that's right. a different process. It's the difference between becoming and being. You're mm-hmm. you're on the road to becoming something, and then when that right. process takes place then you then you are and and then i don't think you get 
recycled at that point. I think so. Hopefully something else happens. We just don't know. Yeah. What that is. <laughs> so. well, Carlos Castaneda, I was, I'm a big fan of his work in his book, The Active Side of Infinity. He talked about, he said the shaman trains in life so he can survive death. So he can right. maintain, you know, his autonomy uh, beyond whatever happens in death in that recycling piece. Uh, yeah. And, and there's, and um, it, it's that idea that for a lot of us in various incarnations, our, our baseline personality is so mm -hmm. transitory and mm -hmm. ephemeral that it doesn't have the, if you want to call it the vibration to cross yeah. that river sticks, you know, you don't have mm -hmm. the, it, you can't cross the veil vibrationally. Um, right. without all of what you thought was you kind of being stripped away and you're like, yeah, you mm -hmm. really didn't work too hard on that one. So go do it again. Yeah. Go do it yeah. again. Yeah. Great points. Let's get into your tarot session. Yeah. You were asking you, what was the initial question that you asked for your tarot? Basically, I was asking like, what, what's the purpose of this place? Because like I said, mm -hmm. with, um, with folks, uh, you know, like a David Icke or, you mm -hmm. know, even uh, some of the Gnostic teachings or you know, um, Alex Jones, you know, this idea of a prison, mm -hmm. planet, you know, that yeah. we're stuck here. Is this a soul trap? I think Farsight even did something on prison. The soul. Yeah, that was it. The soul trap. Soul trap. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Are you just loose for a demonic entity mm -hmm. or an arconic being that's, are you, are you an appetizer? Or are you a snack for something that's just here to feed? Right. Yeah. Right. <laughs> and, and nothing, and nothing more with, you know, right. because that, that might be true. I, I think that there are, uh, parasitic entities out there that feed on on us but is that the extent of it or is that just a part of our greater reality just like i go into the woods and a bear could eat me right but that's not right. all that there is to my existence are they just mosquitoes you know or like there's right. A, right. always something that wants to snack <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> So what what is this session telling you as you're getting into it? What do you well you know what and, and first I actually when I, I took some notes I watched some of um your session which was an awesome session um, so I hope you don't mind me bringing it up, but talking about, right. talking about, you know, hardships and perspective before we get into the heavy stuff. I mean, you talked about, um, being diagnosed with MS and how mm. difficult that was, but then you said, you know, this was uh, a great gift in your life. It wasn't a death sentence for you. Can you talk a little bit about, about that shift? Yeah, it was, uh, it was fascinating because in 2008, um, uh, right when I was about to have to get to redeploy to Afghanistan, I stepped off mm -hmm. a curb outside of a Walmart in Idaho and half, I had this like electric jolt, sh jolt mm. that, jo you know, went through my back. And the next day I woke up and the entire left side of my body was numb. Jeez. I was like, well, what the hell is that? Yeah. <laughs> so, that's new. Yeah. Um, ended up in the ER, death by MRI, spinal mm -hmm. tap and all this other stuff. And I finally got my diagnosis. Um, that, oh, but you know, I, I didn't even know what that was. It was right. like, I thought that was the Jerry's kids thing. And they're like, no, Courtney, that's muscular dystrophy. MS is a totally different thing, <laughs> right. but it was pretty much, you know, like, okay, that's nice, Courtney. We're going to retire you from the military. Thanks for playing. And, um, you know, go home to rot in your wheelchair and wait to die. You know, that kind right. of thing. Um, yeah. and for a number of years, I was really, really torn up about it I I, mm -hmm. I got mad you know I was um very much convinced that you know they did something to me was it the shots was it the uh mm -hmm. chemical exposure what did they do you know right. so I was try constantly trying to figure out you know what was in the vaccines I was given what what mm -hmm. what happened um and then I really spent a lot of time just trying to fix it that I, I have to fix it uh, yeah. which was actually good because then I kind of did um but along that also too, I had to realize that I wasn't going to, I had to also kind of learn to accept it as part mm -hmm. of my experience. And right. when I did that, things really shifted a lot. And so it changed everything about my life mm -hmm. um, from my nutrition. You know, I, I went, I did so many alternative therapies, supplements, right. you know, having my fillings replaced with non-mercury stuff. Mm -hmm. I was, I mean, at one point I had a Nicola Blue, which was like an atmospheric water generator because I didn't want fluoride. Mm -hmm. You know, you get down right. so many of the nutritional rabbit holes. and Oh, yeah. Yep. Making my own toothpaste, my own deodorant. I went oh, yeah. Down Absolutely. All um, All of that stuff. So you just start looking mm -hmm. at everything in your life at like, and but the the course of that at the, the, the fundamental level was of one of responsibility. Mm-hmm. 
that it was, uh, you know, I realized when I, when I put my health into other people's hands, bad things happened to me. Yeah. And when I took it into my own hands, which was scary, like when I decided to stop taking my injections, you mm-hmm. know, I found a really nice and good acupuncturist and I was working with mm-hmm. some Chinese herbs and things like that. And I, I finally had the confidence where I was like, okay, I'm going to stop taking my meds. And that right. was scary. Yeah. And, um, and then after that, I, I just was like, you know what, win or lose, I'm, I'm going to handle this on my own steam with my own opinion. Right. And that moment changed i think everything because it's like i take responsibility i'm i am my doctor essentially mm-hmm. and yeah. i don't defer to somebody else's expertise on that and so that was kind of a big part of the shift was i had to change my perspective and i had to take responsibility for my own body because yeah. it's not anybody else's it's it i'm in this this you know meat suit courtney is entrusted right. to me this lifetime and i have to take good care of her so yeah that was kind of the big shift that happened for me. It, it's scary, but it's it's also in, empowering, yes, right? It really and is, it, and it's messed up because you look at it and it's like if you know you wish that thing wouldn't have happened, but at the same time, if that thing wouldn't have happened, I wouldn't have been here. You know, like for me, it was it was the death of my father, and I wish that thing wouldn't have happened. But if my father wouldn't have died, I wouldn't have done the research and wrote the book and started the podcast and met Edward Reardon and then got invited to join crypto viewing and then got trained by Daz and then ended up here talking with you. That's all because my father died. I would love to have my father back, but all of the, these things happened. Like I changed that. I changed that horrible experience and used that to learn and to grow in a direction that has really served me. Um, you know, so it's, it's, it's tough. It's tough going through that, but sometimes you have to go through those hard things to get to the, that point of growth. Well, and it really is. And I, and I think, that experience where you you know where you are forced to kind of turn inward um Mm -hmm. when you discussed you know when you when your faith kind of went kablooey you know i i went through that a couple of years ago uh i was a very traditional um catholic like Mm -hmm. uber 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 i catholic so you couldn't catholic anymore yeah i I was Um, i was there in my teens i remember yeah um (laughs) And I wouldn't trade that experience because I, I I looked at it like I hit the wall of Catholicism. I was literally mm-hmm. more Catholic than the Pope. Uh, <laughs> and when COVID happened and I watched them shut down my church and I yeah. realized that they lacked supernatural faith, it was like. Yeah, it just um, shifted for you. It, a spell for me was broken. Mm-hmm. And and I needed that, but I don't think I would have broke that spell had I not been as Catholic as you could possibly Catholic. Um, right. Sometimes you have to really dig in. Yeah. And but when that experience was gone, when I didn't have mass to go to, and I wasn't, I'm like, you know, there's now this weight yeah. spiritually. I'm like, mm-hmm. what do I do? You right. know, what do I believe? And having been through multiple shifts where I feel like, you know, I, I had had my little rug and I planted mm-hmm. my little flag and this is true mm-hmm. and God or the maker or creator, whatever you want to call that entity force came along mm-hmm. and ripped my rug out yeah. so many times. So I'm just, now it, it leaves me going, okay, it's me. And mm-hmm. I have to be more open to just, seeing what happens because every time I've tried to say, Oh, this is true. This is exactly how it is. Every time I have done that Mm -hmm. life comes along and kicks me on my ass and I fall on my face and I'm just like, I don't know what's going on. Yeah. You reach that point where you realize, okay, I I get it. This, this perspective serves me for now, right? but tomorrow I might come into information where that no longer functions for me. And it's valuable information. Like yeah. I, the growing up Catholic, it gave me such a foundation and a basis to compare other things to that I, I'm grateful for it. I don't I don't practice that at all anymore. I have a much different belief. But at the same time, parts of it came full circle because now there was a long time I was angry. So I would look at everything that was religious and kind of poo-poo it away. Now I'm at a point where I can look at the you know Christian teachings and say, oh, there's value in that. And here's how this is directly related to my current perspective on things it's the same thing just a different just a different story that you're telling now a different lens well and that kind of reminds me of a there was a because i i think so much of what this realm that we live in operates Mm -hmm. is 
I wasn't joking when I said, I think it's sort of like a choose your own adventure book. I think we're all kind of getting yeah. our own little experience. Yeah. I had this insane dream a couple of months ago where I, I, I owned a house, you know, I've, I've mm-hmm. got my house and I'm living in my house. And I, in the back of my mind, I always sort of knew that there was the, uh, the, the previous owner or the real owner, that there was another part of the house that I didn't really have access to. Mm-hmm. Um, but I didn't ever really see it. You know, so I'm just living my little life in my little part of the house. And then at Mm -hmm. some point, something shifts and like this door magically appears and there's this whole other part of the house. Yeah. And it's decorated really nicely. It's it's like, wow, this is like, I like this over here. And now it's sort of opened up to me. Right. 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 Um, I think depending on what's going on, there are, you know, gates of perception, if you want to call it Mm -hmm. like onion layers that we're only capable of seeing certain things at certain times and then something shifts. And then it's like, wait a minute, was that there the whole time? Right. Right. It was, but you weren't ready to see it. You weren't ready to see it the whole time, you know, and that's the same thing. And I think you touched on this too. Um, Certain teachings, you know, depending on your level of experience and understanding, you'll read like even the Bible again, you'll read it. And at one point you're like, Oh, I'll take this literally. And then you take it from this perspective, like, oh, I'll take this. It's all astronomical. And then you take it right. from a different way. Oh, it's all mystical. And it all fits for and, and it serves you for where you are on your journey. And whether that was the intention behind it or not, I don't know. But I think it's all that lens. You know, you, w- what you focus on is what you see. And sometimes we need that to get to our next, you know, our next step in the journey. Yeah. And, and had I not felt like, you know. Um, that something had been done to me, you know, mm-hmm. with my MS, you know, would I have, would I've gone through that other ultimate process of, of taking right. responsibility for it. And I think that's right. the same way that this idea of a prison planet or a soul trap works, you know, it, it mm-hmm. operates on a perception of reality. Mm-hmm. And one of the, the biggest things that kind of came through in my reading was this idea of eyes being opened versus eyes being closed. Mm-hmm. And so much of it also related to the emotional life of a person. Like, yeah. do you have an open heart? Are you engaging with your emotions? Are you um, are you dealing with the world in that kind of heart-centered way? Which mm-hmm. I think, you know, you hear a lot of that kind of bilge in spiritual communities, you know, but the the longer I go through life, the more I'm thinking, you know, I think there might be something to that actually. Yeah. Uh, that it yeah. does actually matter. And and one of the biggest things that I think came up was the fact that in my reading there weren't any the mental realm was not reflected in it. Like there yeah. weren't swords. There wasn't this feeling of being trapped mentally. It was it was all heart. And our yeah. perception of how tight we're clinging to reality uh mm-hmm. were the big kind of things that came up. And to me those those definitely related to our ability to, to have perception of, are you in control? You know, are you, a are you a magician or are you just going to mm-hmm. sit there and, and, and cower that you just watch the show yeah, to yeah. hold on to your little piece of the pie? So, mm-hmm. yeah, uh, I, I think that's a good point. It reminds me of just talking with Naeem. I think that was last week I had him on and he was talking about just the construct of, of language and the way that we think, you know, we think in words now where he said before we used to think in pictures and that pictures are more creative and more intuitive. So therefore we were more inclined to be open to intuitive things that were around us. And I'm, I'm reading a book um, called the spirit of Reiki right now. And uh, it's got a bunch of authors and the one author, I can't remember who it was now is talking about just Japanese culture and how they think more, you know, with that side of the brain, that side of the mind where it's more um, intuitively led and they have a culture, like a group mindset really uh, that connects them more to that heart center. We're here in the West. I think we're stuck in our mind and logic, which makes a challenge for this kind of stuff. And I think that also relates somewhat to the sense of individual versus group. You know, mm-hmm. I, I know I've read some as far as on, on the Japanese side of the house, like, you know, they're they're much more focused on the group collective, you know, the individual right. takes a secondary role uh, mm-hmm. and you don't want to make sure, sh- you know, you want to make sure you're not being a, a nuisance to your neighbor um, right. versus the American perspective of the individual is the God of this, you know, right. perspective. And it's like, I think we, we sometimes lose the fact that we are an individual, but we are also part of a group. And um, yeah. And that's scary, especially, you know, depending on the spin, and it's something that I'm, I've been wrestling with for a long time. 
when you look at like AI and you look at, you know, that, that hive mind mentality, and it's, it can be a really big, scary thing, but I think it can also be a, a beautiful thing. I mean, I, I, I have people in my life who I am in sync with, like we are mm-hmm. just, you feel the harmonics. I know what they're thinking. I know what they're feeling. We don't have to talk. Like we just, it's just, it's sometimes it's just eye contact. It's, it's just, they walk in the room and there's this communication and it's it's an incredibly beautiful thing and we just support each other and work together yeah we have disagreements we have arguments and all that stuff but i think we can look at the big scary stuff and say oh my gosh it's going to take over my mind and my autonomy and i have that fear sometimes but i think there's also this this can to have that connection uh, i think can really be empowering and collectively if we could i mean we've t- I've talked about the maharishi effect collectively if we could all get in sync, uh, you know, for the right cause, I think we could literally move mountains. We could, but I also think that, I think that's always going to be very difficult because we're, I think of this place as sort of like a one room schoolhouse, you know, mm, you've yes. got people here ready to graduate with a master's degree and you've got people who mm-hmm. are just starting preschool and yeah. they're like, Hey, Sparky just learned how to tie their shoes. Let's be proud for yeah. them. You know? So yep. it, you have so many different people running so many different programs and different mm-hmm. levels of, of experience and, yeah. um, and having had to watch and, and it can be so frustrating when you feel like you've, you know, when you've figured something out or you've, you've stumbled on a nugget of truth, you know, I think so many of us, we want to, um, we want to share that with everybody. We want to see, like, can't you see, you know, we want to just pull the curtain back from the wizard mm-hmm. and, and go, look, you know, he's just right. a guy. And it, it can be really, really hard when the people in our lives, they yes. can't see it. Mm-hmm. And it actually come, kind of becomes a form of truth rape because you keep wanting to, to like get them to see and you keep wanting to, if you could just find the mm-hmm. right video or the right fact or something, right. you could knock some sense into them. And it's like, maybe they're just not meant to see that this lifetime. And that's so hard because you want right. to, you want to help everybody. You want to wake everybody up. Right. And yeah. Not- I, and I stopped doing that a long time ago um, because like you said, it's not their journey. Uh, And it's not fair because I remember being cornered um, by a a born again Christian. I was at a party. I was like 19 and he just cornered me all night was trying. He just kept telling, like, open your heart to Jesus. And like, and I was like, dude, I'm I'm not interested. And and but he just kept pushing stuff on me and like trying to give me pamphlets and like, give me your number. We'll call. We'll talk about God. I'm like, dude, this isn't my thing. So I always try to be mindful of that. And so I, I put stuff out there. If you if you're interested, you'll be called to it if it's right for you. And if it's not, then we're not I'm not going to push it on anybody because we all have our own unique journeys. Yeah, because it, it it really is a matter of perspective. And and that's that's one of the reasons why I like tarot so much is because it is mm. such a subjective medium. Right. And it's open to so much personal interpretation. Yeah. And it's going to be different for everybody. And that's kind of why yeah. I really like it. Um, yeah. Because it is so open ended, <laughs> and you, cool. Could you also have your own lens and filters and experiences as you're as you're going through, uh, looking at the tarot? Yeah. So you you had these bigger concepts, you know, the heart centered versus you know the mind. You weren't seeing mm-hmm. um, what other kind of information was coming through in your session. Like I said, I think a lot of it was, you know, at the core was a, a lack of a lack of engaging with the emotions mm-hmm. and a. And that kind of, I think, rolls into the people who kind of, who who come back. And I, mm-hmm. and I say this as a person, I, I definitely believe that I have lived multiple lives. So I, I think that it, you know, I have definitely come back and done this again and again and again. Who knows right. how long we get recycled. I think God's recycling. Yeah. He's green. You know, it's like, mm-hmm. <laughs> just, just do it again. And I think it's a kindness. Right. Like, oh, she's so close. Or, oops, nope, she right. didn't get that time. Go do it again. You know, I think that there is a a do-over kind of mm-hmm. thing that we get. And and so for those who who aren't necessarily as aware, um, there is a level of of transformation that needs to take place. And and mm-hmm. that came up with sort of a a concept of, of the death card, you know, mm-hmm. that there is this um for those who are not engaging in that um expanded awareness or that that mm-hmm. their eyes aren't open, um, they're gonna come back. 
and that right. for those who um who do have that who can who you know who take that curiosity they 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 start looking like wait a minute i think something's going on here um yeah they start to get a little bit more growth and, and flow, you know, and, and things start to bloom a little bit. And yeah, this idea that there is this, um, we want to think that, that this is a, that, that there's just one pie and, and you just get this little, like the, mm-hmm. that it's a finite situation. Right. But I think that, um, one of the ideas that came up in the reading was that there is really just limitless, infinite potential. Um, yeah. If you're pointed in the right direction, because uh, the idea of the star right. came up. And to me, the star is such a a great card in the tarot because it relates to polar. For a lot of folks, um, the, the the basic reading for the star is, is a card of hope. Mm-hmm. Uh for me, I read it as a, as a, it's a navigational marker. It's the point mm-hmm. that doesn't move. It's the center point. So right. to me, it's like, if you have that, that clear guidance on where it is you want to go, uh, moving towards the center is, is really important because when you're at the center, you're, things are less chaotic. If you picture a wheel, like right. if you're the spoke, you're not moving mm-hmm. as much. If right. you're on that outer right. edge, whoo, things are a little bit. Yeah, you're holding, you're holding on tight. Yeah. Yeah. So moving towards that center point, uh, which to me is what the star represents, it really did indicate that there is this, um, you know, that you have this generative ability to really mm-hmm. create something different here. This this mm-hmm. place could be heaven or it could be hell, and I think yeah. it does. It is a matter of your perspective and. Mm-hmm. Which is easier said than done, because if you're stuck in this, oh, my God, this place sucks. How do you yeah. make that transition to start seeing the heaven and not the hell? Because that's and, that's something yeah. I'm kind of working on myself. Like, mm-hmm. OK, how do I, you know, start affecting that positive change so that you don't feel like you're trapped? It's it's hard, you know, and, and having been in this for, for a couple decades now for me. You know, even just this past summer, like my mental health was horrible. And what was what was interesting and challenging about it was that I knew, like I knew, like I don't want to be in this headspace. I know that I could shift my perspective, but I couldn't get out of it. Yeah. Like it was, it was like I was watching my mind spiral in such a dark place. And there was a part of me going, uh-uh, like you don't want to be here, but I just can't stop the thoughts i can't stop the anxiety like everything was just spiraling it was a really weird perspective to have but at least i'm glad that i at least had it i think because then it gives you something to strive for to get back out to where you want to be it, it does and and i i think that's a lot of the, the ways that i've i've used tarot a lot in, mm-hmm. in especially in in the last like say 10 years or so it, yeah. is is trying to cope with those kind of situations because mm-hmm. I also, you know, experience um, some pretty dark, dark times. You yeah. know, I've been through a war. Uh, I, I carry a lot of, <laughs> I carry a lot of yeah. stuff and that stuff comes up every once in a while. And so for me being able to have a, a mechanism that I can use to kind of explore that with some boundaries so yeah. that I don't hopefully go too far off but yeah i can i can nurse a bad mood for quite a while and yeah it's easy to kind of get it's a it's a bit of an addictive energy the mm-hmm. what was me life sucks yeah there's it's something comforting good. in that despair it's it's weird to say that but you just yeah. get sucked into it it's like you know you're in the car and the sad song comes on you're like i shouldn't listen to this the next thing you know you listen to it on repeat the whole ride to wherever you're going because you're stuck in those those emotional you know feelings. But then also too for that because um, one of the things I I've tried to learn with that experience is to mm-hmm. actually kind of a- appreciate it. Really isn't quite the right word, but one of the the biggest themes that kind of came through when I was doing the past life regression stuff was that um, one of my core I don't issues or you know, bugaboos that was kind of hemming me up in my process was emotional repression. And Mm -hmm. that, um, I tended to, I, I think I'd had some, some pretty significant hurts a couple of lifetimes ago, and I just hadn't been able to process that pain. And so being able to feel, allowing yourself to let Mm -hmm. that out, or if it's, um, to express that sorrow, I think is actually, Mm -hmm. um, 
is healthier than repressing right. it. But the problem is that is that balance of like, okay, we now we're wallowing, you know, and Correct. <laughs> to bring there, it there's, back. A, there's a difference between I'm going to, I'm going to feel the feel and yeah. I'm going to allow myself to, I'm going to seek the feel right. for a long time after that to sit in it. Yeah. Because yeah, but you no, you're right. To, those emotions can get, I think a little bit too dredged up and you, you have to mm-hmm. find a place to put them because otherwise they, right. they can just go, you know, Right. You need to be in them and then you need to work through them. Yeah. And and work on a process of releasing them, whether it's like, that's Mm -hmm. why I like, like um, EFT, like tapping, things like that, Mm -hmm. Uh, different techniques um, to help kind of let that stuff go because uh, yeah, sometimes they just sort of get stuck. And I think for me, like if I don't quite, especially if I don't quite know how I'm feeling, Mm -hmm. Uh, because sometimes that can be a little alien if you're like i know i'm anxious but i don't know why or i'm upset and i don't have a clue that's one of the the ways i i use the cards because it it allows me to explore um those emotional states and it might give me some perspective on like why am i upset because i don't really know why i'm pissed off today um so that's the kind of stuff that i've i've used the cards for that's been pretty helpful in a therapeutic uh fashion yeah, it's it's neat to have that tool. You know, I, I know last year I did a I was doing a meditation right at the like the peak of what I'm going through all this stuff. I didn't realize the extent of just how upset I was. I remember I'm in this meditation and out of nowhere I got hit with this wave and I just started sobbing for like 20 minutes, just uncontrollably just sobbing. And I felt so much better like when it was over because mm-hmm. oh my cat, my cat just showed up. Uh, ah. <laughs> he's checking on me. This is our my new little kitten. And what but, is um, his name? This is Loki. Oh, nice. Oh, you named yeah. him after a trickster god. Look at that. Uh huh. Yep. <laughs> but yeah, uh, both he, of my girls are sleeping over here. They're doubled up. So yeah, they like oh. he likes to come hang out. Oh, now he's gonna walk on the computer. All right, Loki, sure. you're getting in the show. Yep. Uh, but that that release was was huge for me. It allowed me to get so much out. And sometimes when we're not quite seeing it, some it, you know, and having those tools like the tarot or even you know, I'll even use remote viewing uh, in a in a in a sense to gather information for myself uh, to try to navigate these challenging things that I go through. It's been very helpful. Now, I think that's such an important point because this place that we live in, we are you know we're essentially operating uh, to borrow a metaphor of you know Tommy, we're the deaf, dumb, and blind kid, right? We. Mm-hmm. We're, we're so at a loss of what's going on. Who are we? Who are these people right. we're here with? What's the point of this place? We think there's something going on. We think there's might be something bad. And, but so much of our, our just basic makeup, you know, seems to, our senses are so dumbed down here. Mm-hmm. It, it can be really hard. So I, I love the fact that we have, you know, tools that can help right. kind of poke around in that realm of, what am I thinking? What am I feeling? Right. What the hell is going on for me? And th- that might be different than what's going on for somebody else mm-hmm. because they're living their choose your own adventure book, you know? So, right. And, and I think so many of us though, uh, regardless of where you are on the journey, we want to have that connection with the divine, with something higher or something more. And I'm reminded of, of Bob Monroe's book, um, Far Journeys, his second book. That's the one where he talked about Lush. And what what he said in that, you know, that was a traumatic experience for him. Like he almost didn't put it in the book and it was a, a really heavy topic for him to ponder. And this is where he gets this information. For those of you who are, that aren't familiar with it, I highly recommend reading all his books. Um, but he got this understanding of, oh my gosh, we're a garden and we are designed to create energy. And the way they get that energy is through fear, suffering, and then ultimately loneliness. But one of the things he said is that one of the ways they achieve that is they have the divine that's just beyond your reach and it gives you just enough to want to chase after it. And I, I am reminded of that right now because and you read his third book and I think it brings yeah. you a little bit more hope and stuff. Um, but I, again, as we've been talking about that theme, sometimes we need to have that perspective of things are scary, things are bad. Like we need to have that perspective of the lion's chasing me. So I run away from the lion and get to higher ground and get safe, Right. Um, so I think having that call and then having these tools to use, to connect with, call it higher, call it your higher self, call it God, right. the universe, whatever. I think there's a lot of value in that. There is. And I, and I think there is a lot of value in, in looking at this, um, 
the situation as adversarial and mm -hmm. that there is a um in order to be the hero you have to have a villain yeah and to me that always made a lot of sense that if um if this realm was easy and calm and and peaceful and if we all could kumbaya and just get along and everything would be fine we would be weak we would be mm -hmm. we wouldn't be prepared for anything we'd be, we'd be right. soft you know it's like right. when when a chicken hatches it has to peck itself out of its, its shell otherwise yeah. it's not going to have the strength to survive and right. so i think that our maker gives us a bad guy that mm -hmm. we can not necessarily fight, but we can go, oh, yeah, you're the bad guy. I see what you're doing right. and learn how to shut down the supply. You know, like, mm -hmm. oh, if there is this entity that's feeding off me or that that wants me to feel bad. Well, the best thing you can do is then to not give it food. Right. Spending all this unnecessary time trying to figure out who the bad guy is, what their methodology is. It, ultimately, that just feeds more into that that cycle, like if there mm -hmm. is a trap. So the best right. thing you could do then is live a freaking fabulous life, learn how to be happy, right. open your heart and mm -hmm. make friends, you know. So don't 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 feed yeah. the beast, right? In that in yeah. that instance. Um did you get hard. did you get anything on it's it's very hard because especially you have this knowledge of okay this thing's here it's it's like uh i remember the the first version of it um by stephen king they did the movie i guess back in the 80s or 90s mm -hmm. and they're in the basement and the, the clowns coming behind all the kids and doing like werewolves and all these things that'll scare the kids and they're like well just don't be afraid of it and it can't bother you and i remember thinking like how the hell do you not be afraid of this demon that's behind you where if you're afraid of it it's going to eat you you know, but then you start to realize that once you can master that fear, once you can put that fear aside, the scary thing really does go away. It, right. it, it does it because you're not feeding it that energy. It, but it's it's hard. It's very hard it's to do. Very hard, especially if mm -hmm. you do feel like you're alone, and especially mm -hmm. I think for a lot of folks who, you know, if you end up in this corner of the internet, you've obviously done some work. You you've you've, you've been you've down that road. Yeah. You know, you know, you've been down enough rabbit holes. You know, kind of, you know. And that that's really isolating because the 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 more off the beaten path you get, the the less people you have to talk to, mm -hmm. and the more your relatives think you're strange, and the more you can't say because you just know that nobody is going to understand what the hell you're right. doing anyway. They're going right. to think weird, and so it's already really isolating. And then if you're ingesting a lot of screen time media and things like that that promote fear and that make you mm -hmm. feel even more helpless or get you thinking that there is some sort of organization political structure or type of hat that is going to come save mm -hmm. you you know it it it's the same thing of oh jesus is going to save me oh god's going right. to right they're just it's, it's the same story yeah it's, it's the same, the same it's a different flavor right so right. it's the savior complex that somebody else has to do it. And it's like, mm -hmm. you, you have to do it, I think. Right. It's hard. It's really but, hard. But I think that doesn't mean that there won't be a savior that comes through. But that's keeping that's keeping you in that, that aspect of the game, right? That avenue of the game. It doesn't mean yeah. that there's not a trap. It doesn't mean there's not scary things out there. They, right. they are absolutely all there. And I think depending on your perspective and, and your, your level of where you are, those things are, are very real. There was a point in time when, yeah, that was it. I was in a state of despair. I mean, again, to quote Bob Monroe again, he says, you know, in his work, he's like, when you die, you f get absorbed into your highest belief system. So if you're a Christian, you believe in heaven, you're going to show up at the pearly white gates, you know, wherever, whatever it is that you believe in. And think about that in a dream state or, you know, in altered states right. of meditation, how your thoughts and beliefs really shape kind of what you're experiencing. And the more you hone that skill, the more control you have in uh, in those states of mind and consciousness and i i do yeah I, I do think it's definitely it's important to to, to at least contemplate that and mm -hmm. realize that you know a lot of people think that there is some sort of um whether you call it the the saturn moon matrix you know trap right. where uh you know do you go into the light do you don't go into the light all of that kind of stuff i think yeah um i think worrying about that might be also part of the trap you know <laughs> like well, it draws, it draws you to it if that's what you're yeah. focused on. 
And and it's this incessant need to make things really complicated and mm-hmm. like, oh, I've got to figure this out. Oh, I've got to figure mm-hmm. that out. So you're constantly chasing right. your tail going, oh, if I can just research this obscure form of Kabbalah, then I'm really going to figure out everything. And the whole thing is going to make total sense. And then I'm going right. to win the game. And right. it's really, I think so many of us have have gone down that road. Um, I know right. for me, I've, I've opted to, I'm taking the war games approach of the only winning move is not to play. So that's, that's my, right. my jam is I opt out. <laughs> yeah. Just more rabbit holes. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I've been exploring less and less. And I think part of it's just because I'm, I'm so busy at times now too. Yeah. Um, but I, I also think that those journeys are, are important. I do. Um, I think, I think they're important until they're not. Right. Right. And, and like right now I don't feel called to, spend the hours and hours listening to the podcast and, and the books and everything. But at the same time, I could come across something tomorrow where I'm like, I need, I need to dive into this. Yeah. It, it's all on, uh, you know, as I always say, it's all on where your intuition is, is leading you. There's different information that we need um, and different things we need to explore and, and to understand. Um, no, and, and I, I think wanna... that is a great point that being, thank you being open to guidance, because like for mm-hmm. me, it's, I know in my life, especially, um, I'm called more towards the natural world right now. Like Mm -hmm. um, I've been studying herbal medicine, you know, uh, I like cooking, you know, so like for me, it's a lot less in the the technology side of the house. I'm kind of like, okay, tech over there doing its thing. Um, For me, it's a lot more um, working on my house or figuring out how to keep a plant alive or, you know, that kind of stuff. I'm right my focus is okay i spent so much time up here figuring right. out the truth now mm-hmm. i actually have to kind of like st- take a step back and kind of dig into my life and and start to figure you gotta, out you got to apply what you've learned yeah. yeah you got to take that and then you have to use it you know how is this applicable um you know I, I forget who said it but they said anybody can go sit in a cave and find enlightenment but doing it here in the, the real world uh that's the real challenge you know maintaining the life as as our society has it set up and still using that knowledge and find that level of enlightenment. I mean, that's, that's a hard thing to do and keep your sanity about you, you know? Um, so I'm, I, I know for sure we're, we're not downplaying like we've both been through it uh, mm-hmm. and we're, we'll continue to go through it. I mean, I, you know, we're just at a point right now, I think where I'm like, okay, I'm, I'm good where I'm at right now. I don't need any more scary things that I need to dive oh. deep into and explore. And, um, I, and I, I like the idea that for some people, I think believing that they're in a trap is right where they need to be like Mm -hmm. because maybe that's that's a shift in their perspective so Mm -hmm. you having that adversarial relationship of of realizing oh my god there might be a bad guy here like Mm -hmm. you know that's an upgrade for their thinking you know and right so i don't want to be like oh god you guys are so silly for thinking that you're stuck here you know and um we all i think have to kind of move through that um, and I think, I think, I think people probably are stuck here. I think there might be a trap, um, th- but I think there's a way out of the trap. And I think the trap is, you know, you you have to do the work to find the passcode really to escape or the vibration, whatever, however you want to word it. Um, so I think there is a legit like, okay, you signed up for this course. You're not getting out till you graduate. And right. you're stuck here, and those scary things are are there. And I'm curious, did you get any any data on any scary things in your in your tarot? Anything about that? Yeah, I actually kind of pulled out one of the cards. There's a a card here. It's renewal, and it's mm-hmm. fireweed. And one of it is is there's this you know this being that's that's rising up to the heavens, and then there's mm-hmm. one that's sort of succumbing down into the earth, and mm-hmm. it, it has that kind of like one lives, one dies. There is right. an energetic element here of um Mm -hmm. you know everything's got to eat you know and what if what if this place is set up where that there is a you know a a force your adversary your Mm -hmm. bad guy your villain for this for this narrative you have to have a bad guy in order for you to be the Mm -hmm. hero and but that bad guy has to be energetically fed what if it's just you know it's your particular egregore that's that's generated to right. to torment you in this lifetime well it needs to eat because it has to be mm-hmm. generated and you will you you fund <laughs> you know you, you fuel your monster until you figure out oh wait a minute yep. 
I'm feeding this thing. <laughs> so right. I like slay your dragon, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Um, I, I wonder if it's something like that, that, um, and that doesn't necessarily have to be nefarious. It just means mm-hmm. that you're given an opportunity to be the hero of your story. Right. Right. Well, I, I look at it uh, from that perspective in terms about feeding and stuff. It, it, it is a matter of that perception that we have of things. Right. Um, I remember when I first really started exploring this exact topic, I was like, well, to a chicken, uh, I'm this horrible ghoulish monster that eats them you eat but their babies my, right but you to my dog it's horrible right i mean if i yeah. think chickens should hate us but to my dog i'm a loving member of the pack mm-hmm. right so it's a matter of of perspective yeah of, of and, and am i evil am i a horrible being no i'm doing what i was designed to do which is eat right uh, and then you can get into the whole thought of well who the hell designed this whole system here what a cruel concept and it might be, it might be a cruel concept, or it might be that crash course in right. spiritual growth and development. Well, and the, the thing of it is, is, is that we don't know what's on the other side of this realm. Like right. I said, we're, we're Tommy here. We're the deaf, dumb, and blind kid. We don't really, mm-hmm. we're, we're cut off even from God. We, we know that there right. is this something there, but everything here is designed to kind of confuse us. And mm-hmm. You know, what if <clears throat> what if we need to be stronger? You know, mm-hmm. uh, we don't know what the other side of this place is, what the you know, we right. always assume that heaven or the afterlife is some sort of palatial thing where you don't have to do anything. Mm-hmm. Well, that sounds kind of boring. Right. Like, what if, yeah. you know, we have to be toughened up or spiritually adept for something else when we get out of this place you know mm-hmm. what if this is just a little stop on our jaunt we might be in boot camp right now who knows? yeah who knows? we have to like you toughen know? up <laughs> so yeah sucks yeah yeah but, but i think it's... meetings will continue until morale improves i think <laughs> uh, yeah they talk about bringing it full circle right now you know uh you're, you're absolutely right i mean the, the truth is we, we don't know um but it, i think it's to an extent, what we make of it. Oh my gosh, this cat scared me. Can't see him right now, but he just yep. jumped like in my green screen. There we go, kitties. <laughs> it scared the heck out of. As I'm saying, he just put like, his claws hmm. on my shoulder and scared of me. But yeah, you never I, I think this right, yeah. but I think it's I think it's what we what we make of it. Um, there's some things. There's a lot of things that are out of our control, but I think that we have the power to control our reactions and our responses to things and what we take from it. And I think the questions. Really yeah. Yeah. And I've, I've been uh, reading the, some of the, I've been reading a book on stoicism lately. And mm-hmm. that that's actually, you know, one of the hallmark points of that is to not get upset about stuff that you have absolutely no control over. Right. Because so much of this world seems really designed to generate outrage and mm-hmm. to your attention. You know, if you right. think about your your focus, your witness, your attention, your if you think about your eyeballs as a a source of currency that mm-hmm. where you put them, you know, is getting some sort of metaphysical or, or spiritual benefit and where you yeah. put your faults that's mm-hmm. a lot of witness you know so yeah um if we can find better uses on where we put our eyeballs and make sure that we're putting them towards stuff that that really sings to us or we're getting some mm-hmm. benefit from and it's right. you know that's important right and and that's not the same as just sticking your head in the sand and saying there's nothing bad out there i'm just going to focus on all the good and like I think I think that gets dangerous with the positive thinking and just the positive thinking. Right. But it's it's love and light, uh, just the, love and light, only love and light. Right. Yeah. Right. I think that's way too much because there's bad there's difficult things out there. And it's like being on the on the river, right? And you know the rapids are there, but there's also my clear passage. So I'm aware of the rapids, but I'm just gonna take this path here because if I'm looking at the rapids, I'm going to those rapids and my boat's gonna crash and I'm gonna have this other experience. Some people might like that. They want that challenge, but yeah. And and for some folks, that's, that's what they need, you know, or that's what they want, or they have to go through that. Um, Mm -hmm. I've been shipwrecked enough times where I'm like, you know, I'm good. I don't really want to go through that again. So I'm like, can I find a different path? Because, um, you know, a lot of this has been, you know, very Mm -hmm. emotionally challenging and, um, yeah. One of the things that Tarot has kind of taught me in, in looking at archetypal energies for mm-hmm. for different personality types or, or different, that there's different times in your life where you're you're kind of on a particular experience. And, you know, for me, a lot of it was the Hermit card in Tarot. Um, 
of having to have, you know, this time apart where you're experiencing something and you're going on a spiritual journey and you're learning mm-hmm. something and you're hopefully shining a light for, for somebody else that comes along behind you. But there is this time apart where, you know, you have to experience something and, and that's, yeah. that's a difficult journey and you're, you just got your little lamp and your light and you're out there in the dark mm-hmm. um, trying to find something. And I think for those people who who really want to try to find something, you know, there's a lot of options out there. So it's, it's right. important to have just one of the big things was discernment, you know, right. that came up in the reading was to, to try to have some discernment and go, wait a minute. What am I trying? What's what's trying to distract me? What's, mm-hmm. what's what's wanting my attention? And to try to make sure that we don't fall prey to that because there can be a prey, you you know. And cat yeah. butt is you know always good. <laughs> like, that's that's my distraction. Yes, <laughs> some cat butt. <laughs> oh, he's relentless now. <laughs> but you're you're absolutely right. Um, you know, having that discernment, I think, is very important. And something we don't and we don't always know, but I think that's where it's. You know, there's those times for um, just following your intuition. Like that. I, used, I used to just go out, like you know, go to the bookstore and see what book calls to you, or go out into nature. I just used to walk and see what I would find, and and I had some amazing experiences. Going, all right, where is my intuition leading me? And I'd end up in a certain spot, and I'd have an experience there. And whether it was my imagination or not, I learned a lot from those experiences. I don't believe that it was my imagination, but I'm, I'm open to it. Yeah regardless i walked away with knowledge from those times where you know you go out in the dark by yourself and face that fear it's terrifying but you learn something from it and you grow from it i think that's very important well and that that is absolutely what the fool card in tarot represents it's you know Mm -hmm. this being at the top of a a mountain and he's got his eyes up to the heaven he trusts and he's got this little white dog that's at his at his heels and that's a symbol of his intuition and um he just sort of steps off the cliff ready for the adventure Mm -hmm. you know because he trusts that Hey, where I'm being led, where I'm being guided is going to be a good thing. And even if there's some mishaps along the way, you know, you, you, you're at least open to the opportunity. Um, And I think one of the most important things, at least for me, is sort of realizing when you're in kind of a cycle or what kind of archetypal imagery or experience are you having right now? Are you, you know, because Mm -hmm. we, we can sort of roll and shift into these different kinds of energies. And if you can kind of figure out like, okay, what story am I in right now? Like, am I in a romance novel? Am I an adventure? Am I in a Mm -hmm. metaphysical tome? You know, like what's your, what's your story? Um, We can kind of get a hint on maybe what might be coming around. So I I like looking at it like a, you know, you're in your, your hero's journey story. Like what part Mm -hmm. are you look, you know, so. Great perspective, Courtney. I think that'll lead us into uh, the next yeah. part of our conversation. Um, so I want to I want to wrap up this one on, on our soul trap and, and really, uh, you know, just perspective conversation. Any final thoughts on on this one for our, our listeners and viewers out there? Well, I think that my biggest takeaway is is not to be afraid because mm-hmm. I I think that so much of that if if your belief is is leaving you feeling helpless, I, I think that's something you should should think about. And that um, the thing that came through the most in my reading was was having being open to the idea of a, of an emotional experience and, mm-hmm. and having a heart centered approach to things. I think that was right. the, the key takeaway, and that um, recognizing, you know, if there is a threat, just recognizing that that it's there. You know, it's like mm-hmm. that's half the battle right there, right? You know, so if right. you can learn how to sidestep the trap, mm-hmm. you know, then then you've you've accomplished what you needed to do. Right. So yeah, that's great advice. And you know, not having fear sometimes, I mean, we all have it. And sometimes to get rid of it, you have to lean into it. And say, what am I afraid of and why? And how do I ta- how do I not be afraid? Right. Um, and that's what leads us down that rabbit hole until we realize, oh. I didn't need yeah, to be afraid didn't of that. Need to be afraid. Yeah. 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 So great advice. I, I enjoyed this discussion. For those of you that are watching, um, let us know your thoughts on the journey. Number one, uh, your thoughts. Are we stuck here in some kind of prison uh, or are we away off in, in thinking that maybe there's a way to escape it? Um, you know, I think we all have our own perspectives on that and that's, mm-hmm. that's perfectly okay. 
So I think we can have some good discussions in the uh, in the threads that follow with this one. So we love to hear your thoughts on that one. And uh, Courtney, it's been uh, it's been a great pleasure having you on again. I'm looking forward to part two. We're going to have another one talking about, I think, tarot and divination. We're going to get into all that, Absolutely. Uh, you know, that process and things to learn from that. So uh, thank you for being my guest on this one. And for those of you out there in the YouTube world, you can find more intuitive talk. Uh, remote viewing is really the crux of, of what uh, the Future Forecasting Group does. Uh, check us out at futureforecastinggroup.com. And uh, I guarantee it's going to blow your mind. Some fascinating things out there. So Courtney, I said it a bunch of times, but thank you so much uh, for being oh, my guest you, tonight. So on behalf of Courtney, the rest of the future forecasting group, I'm Dennis Nappy II. Thanks for watching.